Welcome to the Board Game Closet. My name's Jimmy. Today I'm off work and I decided to shoot a little video to tell you about some of my most favorite games recently. And so I'm not going to do any kind of cool, crazy shots of the components and the pieces. I'm just going to hold up a box to you and tell you why I like this game so much. And so I've got a whole pile of them. I don't know if I'm going to get to all of these games because there's literally just like so many of them everywhere. That it's just, I feel like 2019 has been a great year. And so I don't know if it's been a good one for you, if you feel like it's been down or if it's been good. But for me, to sit around with all these brand new games, it's uh, pretty, pretty cool. So uh, I'll just get started. If you don't have any roll and write games, you need to pick up Cartographers if you can find a copy of it. This is a great flip and write, really. You're flipping cards over and then you're drawing on this little map. And so the basic idea is that you are a cartographer and you're making a map up as you go along and looking at the land and you're trying to score points. And the scoring on this game is really what makes it great. I think if this had just been another fill in the blank kind of a game, it really wouldn't have been that impressive to me. But the way that you score points in this game is they show you uh, round A, B, C, and D. And each one of these rounds is going to score twice. And so A and B will score first, then B and C, then C and D, then D, and it wraps back to A. And so you can't put all of your eggs in one basket in this game because if you do, it's only going to score twice and then that's it. So it keeps you on your toes with the way that that works. And then there are monsters that come up in the game. And so when a monster comes up, you have to pass your piece of paper to someone around the table and then they get to mess you up and they write on your little piece of paper and then you kind of have to do some damage control and work around this new thing that they put onto your board because if you don't at the end of the round you're going to score negative points and uh if that's not your cup of tea then just don't play with the monsters and i don't know if the designer would like to hear me say that but uh that's what we do at home so when i'm playing with rod and uh, bradley we have the monsters when i play with my wife who doesn't want you to mess up what she's doing we just don't play with the monsters and and so, but anyways, this is a small box game that is crazy, crazy nice. And so I highly recommend Cartographers. <clears throat> Next up is our friends over at Druid City Games. Oh, and by the way, this got sent to me. Uh, they gave this game to me for free, if that matters to you or not. Um, and then Sorcerer City. Now, this is a game that I backed on Kickstarter. And I actually bought an extra set of the coins that come in this game because they are just amazing. And so I did kind of like a little teaser video on this one. But this is just the coolest components. It's, it's a tile game of 300 tiles. And, um, oops, besides that, uh, the tiles uh, do not come out of this game. And so for a game that has that many tiles in it, it's just amazing to me that they were able to make it not that difficult to put this thing away and to organize it. And so I really, really love it. If you can spring for the deluxe edition, I highly recommend it, mainly for these coins because these coins are so stinking amazing. I don't want to take too much time uh, going into components on these games, but this one is worth it because these coins actually interlock and so you can place all of your coins together and this is so cool to me you can put all these coins however many you've accumulated in the game and then you can hold all of your coins in one hand and with two fingers you know and so it's just really cool the way that they did it they worked really hard to make this work and so i i think it's amazing and the gameplay is super fun this game is like a, it's a tile laying game uh, mixed with the deck builder. And so there is a time aspect to the game where you are trying to uh, place these tiles out in a certain amount of time, but they it's you have to play whatever you reveal off the top of the deck as you uh, flip these tiles out. You put them out. There's monsters that you have to deal with. There's the whole buying thing where you get to buy these cards that you get to put into your deck that then you hope that they come out and you can use them and there's multiple ways to score points. And um, so it's just, it's a great, great game. I, I feel like they knocked it out of the park on this one. And like I said, I actually bought an extra set of these coins so that I could use them in multiple games. They're just so nice. Now I do have relationships with this company, James Hudson and Druid City. I'm on their podcast and I've done some work for them. So take that for whatever you want to. So I'm not just recommending games that I get for free or 
um, that I know the people, but uh, that's how it feels right now, but I promise that's not the case. Uh, here's one uh, that I didn't, uh, that was not sent to me for free, and I don't do any work for them. Uh, this is the Artemis Project. It's by Grand Gamers Guild, and this game I got to uh, preview uh, for Kickstarter a long time ago, but then I still bought my own copy of the game, if that matters to you. But this, I got to play at Gen Con a number of years ago when it was just a prototype, and I absolutely loved it. It is the coolest uh, dice, if you like uh, games, dice placement games, maybe like, um, oh, I'm losing it now. Uh, Alien Frontiers is the one that I compare it to because it's it's one of those games where you have you roll the dice and then you place them out on certain spots of the board. And what's really cool about this game, other than the components, because the components are just so amazing. I got the Galileo Galileo version or whatever, and it comes with really cool meeples that you get to put into the ship. And I think that comes in the base game too. It's got these miniatures and uh, first player tokens, and then it has has one of the coolest coins that I've ever seen in games other than um, Sorcerer City. The coins for this game actually look like uh, enamel pens. I mean, that's how there's like three different, four different colors on this coin and uh and i bought some extra ones of these so i'm just a, i'm like i'm a sucker for coins but these came in individual bags they're so nice it's just really really cool i'm gonna throw some magnets on a couple of these and then put them somewhere wherever you put magnets i guess and uh but i think that that's really cool but the gameplay on this i kind of skipped over that but the gameplay on this is really really cool where you are just you're placing your dice down onto the board but it has this mechanism in it where it's like if you're too greedy you're going to get punished because like let's say that you want resources and you have a really high die you put that six out there that's awesome you're going to get six resources but anybody that has a lower number than you can kind of bump you down and so the lower numbers go in front of you and so there's a limited number of resources every round so uh if you went too greedy to get six resources the people in front of you by the time it gets around to you they might be gone and so uh, that's a really cool mechanism where you can slide in between people that same mechanism is throughout even when it comes to getting the workers that land on the plane every round uh, you get to choose which ones that you want but somebody could slide in front of you or you could slide into somebody in front of them it's just a really cool thought the way that they're using the dice and it makes you kind of plan out things there's projects that you can do there's stuff that comes up during the game and then it's got this really cool thing where uh, it scores around the board like in a certain order every round. So you know it's going to go here, 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 here. And so you can use that to your advantage when it comes to uh, all the dice and the things that you're doing. I can't recommend it enough. If you can spring for the Galileo, Galileo edition, I highly recommend it. This is a deluxe version along with the Sorcerer City that I would recommend up upping. Sometimes... I think we know some deluxe editions aren't that deluxe, and so, uh, but those are two that come along that are really good deluxe games. Um, 5211, if you want to buy a game that's under 15 bucks that you'll get a ton of play out of, uh, I highly recommend this game for people that are traditional card players. So if you have somebody in your family, maybe it's a mother-in-law, a grandmother, something like that, that loves to play games like spades and hearts and all of that kind of stuff, um, this would be a game rummy. Uh, it's not complicated like some of the, the higher, heavier card games, but I would I would compare this more to like a, a press your luck card rummy -ish style game and uh, what i mean by that is on a round all that you do is you play two cards then you play one card and then you play one card that's the whole thing and that's where they got the name you have five cards in your hand you play two cards and one card then one card and so it plays really quickly you do that process of five two one one over and over and over again until the deck runs out and it's all about pressing your luck you want to be in the highest group of cards that doesn't bust and so I'm not going to get too far into that, but if that sounds interesting to you, then 5211 is a great one, and it's super cheap. It's not that complicated. Okay, uh, just one. And speaking of, I don't know if all of these games came out this year or not, so I'm not doing, this isn't a 2019 list. This is just games I like and I've played recently and I'm recommending. Uh, here's another one, just one. This is... 
maybe under 20 bucks. I can't remember how much I paid for this game. This is the party game to have on the shelf. When you don't know what to do, you just pull this game off, you play this, you're gonna play a number of rounds of this and everybody is going to love it. Um, the simple idea is that somebody is trying to figure out what the one word is and everybody around the table is going to give them a one word clue. The person that's guessing closes their eyes, everybody reveals their one word. If any of them match, those clues are discarded. So let's say you're trying to get me to guess mustard and two people do yellow. Well now yellow is out and the only words that are left is condiment and I don't know, like uh, squeeze or seed or something like that. And so now I have to think, okay, well, what condiments are seeds? And okay, maybe it's mustard. And so I make my guess. And every single time I played this game with new people, I say, let's play one round, you'll get it. At the end of that one round, almost every single time, it sounds super cheesy, but almost every single time people cheer and they're like, yeah, we got the word. And so then you move around. And it's not that hard. It plays pretty quickly uh, because it's not that in-depth. You don't feel like all the weight is on you to give this perfect clue. You're just writing one word down and moving on. And so I recommend this one a lot. Uh, the Grim Masquerade, again from Druid City Games. So I know these people, I love them, but this was a game, a social, this is a, when I, I was at, um, Gen Con and uh, Essen with them as they were demoing this game and the thing that they kept saying to everybody was that this is a game, a social deduction for game for people that are bad at social deduction. And what they meant by that is, I don't know if you've ever played a social deduction game and it comes around to your turn and they say, are you the traitor? And you're put on the spot and you're terrible at this. And so you're like, no, I'm not the traitor. And then they pick you out of the crowd and then you're like, this is stupid. I don't even want to play. Well, this game, you are doing social deduction without even having to say anything. And so it's really smart um, deduction based off of the cards that you've got or the cards that other people are taking or giving away. It really reminds me of a more complex love letter um, in that, you know how, if you, I don't know if you played love letter, but you play a card, pick up a card, it's very similar to that. And this, you're either keeping a card or giving a card to someone else. And that mechanism alone uh, just is so much fun, but there's special abilities that you could use. There's accusations that you could make. Um, but any, anyways, I, I showed this to people that are not into social deduction and they loved it. And I've played this with people that love social deduction and they're like, yes, this is it. So I feel like this is a new staple in that uh, type of game. So if you're into social deduction, add this to the collection. If you have, if you hate that genre of games, then sit down and play this with somebody who does. Give it one more chance and see if maybe this can win you over. I really can't recommend that one enough. So there you go. Along, okay, so I'm, I'm doing social games, right? Grim, uh, Just One, and now Wavelength. This is another great, great social game. And so I wanna show you the components on this one, which by the way, the artwork on this is phenomenal. And you don't need amazing artwork for a great party game, uh, but this is a uh, an example of when artwork just goes above and beyond to make you love something. Uh, but this is the opposite. This one has almost no artwork in it. It is just cards, but it does come with this cool little plastic shield that rotates and all of that. But basically this is, let me show you how the game works. It's that quick. But basically you close this, you draw a card that says, this says, let me do an easy one, hairless or hairy. And then you, you rotate this thing. And if you were the one giving the clue, then you reveal it and it shows you a spot on, on this spectrum of hairless to hairy and you have to give them a clue that would try to get your team to land right on four points. And so you come up with whatever that clue is, you're like in super duper hairy and hairless. I, I'm not thinking of a good clue right now, but anyways, you come up with a clue and then you turn it around to them and then they debate and they do this whole thing where they're like, I think his clue of, um, I don't know, um, 
beard man is you know what it's it's way over here and you know whatever and then they reveal it and then they show and they're like oh i was way off and so what's so much fun about this game one it's easy to teach but then two it's one of those games where you give a clue that you think is amazing and then as soon as you say it they start talking and you're like either i'm an idiot or they are and so it's just it's so much fun like uh, one of the clues that i gave it was on spicy and mild or not spicy and my clue was tabasco and now as soon as i said tabasco they start going to town on where they think tabasco should be on that realm and it was totally off and i realized that i gave it gave an awful clue but it, it was just a lot of fun and so we do the competitive thing of teams and so we just go to town and there's so much fun when you're like come on guys you can get this if you land on four points we're gonna win it's just it's so much fun i just i just love wavelength i think i picked this up on amazon for maybe 25 dollars, maybe somewhere in there so it's super it's not expensive and you will get a ton of replayability out of this and it's one of those games as soon as we played everybody said okay let's play again we're gonna win this time and so it, it's just great so anyways okay uh another one this is a two-player game so if you're into two players uh you and your spouse or you got a friend or a lunchtime buddy that you want to play games with i cannot recommend skull hollow enough i love the way that this game looks uh you got to look at the artwork on this one go look it up online and you can see the cool artwork it's this mixture it feels like a disney art uh cartoon style uh maybe like old school like i'm thinking of the old school robin hood uh, uh movie back in the day and so these characters have that feel and look and then these monsters that they've created uh i can't remember how many come in the box but there's like there's all these different monsters that you can fight one two three four different monsters that you can fight in the game and so the the basic premise is that either you get to be the monster or or you get to be the fox and creatures that are trying to stop them. And both of you feel very valid in your reasons. The, the monsters say the fox and creatures have taken over their world and they're going to stop them. Or then the fox and creatures say this terrible, horrible monster showed up and I'm going to kill them. And so the, the coolest part about this game is that there are two boards. There's a little board um, that is the ground. And so you're moving around on this nine grid board and you're moving around trying to do different things. But then when you're able to, when you get to the monster, you actually can jump up and then you move your creature onto this part of the monster. I feel like the way that they did this is so smart because once you get onto the monster, you start to disable certain parts of the monster. Now it has this deck building feel to it not a deck building it's not deck building but you have a deck of cards that you are using so when you disable a certain part of that monster if they have cards that are this burrow they can't use them now until they heal the burrow on them so basically they could have rounds of the game where they have cards that they can't use and that is frustrating and enjoyable if you are the one that is doing that the game plays really quick it's not a complicated game to teach or play and it looks great on the table i just love it this is my favorite pencil first game and they have a lot of great ones that they've made but this is my favorite one that they've done and it's just amazing another two-player game technically you can play unmatched with four people i have never done that i don't know how i would feel about it but this is a two-player game that i recommend called unmatched there are multiple expansions to this so that's really cool if you're into that uh, but there are uh, basically the idea is that you are fighting these different legends so in this base box that i have it's medusa king arthur alice and sinbad and this is another game that is highlighted by the artwork and the miniatures. And so kind of like Grim Masquerade, it's a good game, but it is just accentuated by the cool stuff. This is a good game that is accentuated by the artwork and the miniatures that come with it. And it's not complicated. I don't know how long they say it takes you to play this one, uh, 20 to 40 minutes, and that's totally true. And once you learn the game, you're getting closer to that 20 point mark. But short version of the story is this is a deck game, kind of like Skull Kahlo. You draw cards from a deck and that allows you to do things, allows you to attack certain people, or not attack certain people, but use certain characters that you have every miniature also comes with these little tokens that go beside it and so these are little tokens that you can use um i opened the box and it's all destroyed but you have these little tokens that go down on the board 
Um, the coolest part about this is that Medusa plays different than King Arthur, than Alice, and Sinbad. And so because the game plays quickly, you're rewarded uh, to want to play it again and again and again. So you're like, okay, I really like Alice. I'm going to try to master Alice. Okay, I've played Alice a bunch. Let me use Medusa now. And oh, you are always so good with Sinbad. Let me try to play Sinbad now and see what that's like. And so it's just, it's great. They've got a bunch of expansions coming out, all kinds of ones. And so I just love it. Um, let me talk about Azul, the new Azul. Now I did a whole review on this and I gushed about it and I said that I loved it, but this is my new favorite Azul. And if you are going to say, Jimmy, which version do you want to play? I will always choose this version. My, my kid, uh, uh, Joel, who's nine, he loves uh, the base Azul. He wasn't as big of a fan of this. My wife, I don't know where she falls yet on this, but for me, the gamer, I love this version of it. It feels it, it feels like the evolution of this concept of grabbing these tiles from the center, placing them on the board. This feels like the natural place. If you were going to perfect this thing, this is the version that I think is, and that's, I don't know, people are gonna disagree with me because Azul, base Azul is probably perfect in so many people's eyes. But this is just for me, this hits the right niche for me. This uh, scratches all those itches that I want in a game with being able to trigger things when I want to trigger them, being able to hold all my tiles, not being forced to place them on my board at, right when I get them. There's just so many good things about this. And I absolutely love the way it looks on the table. It looks complicated, but once you explain it to people, it's not complicated at all. And that's what I was afraid of with this version. I thought that they were going to create this version of the game that was over the top and complicated and so many rules and all that kind of stuff. And uh, Michael Kiesling just nailed it. He totally nailed getting the exact right complexity on this game. Anyways, I've talked about it a lot, so I love it and it's good. Okay, um, another entry into great components is Rurik Dawn of Kiev. This is by Peacekeeper Games. I know the owner of this company, so we're friends, but uh, that's as far as it goes. I wasn't, I had to buy my own copy of this game. He did give me some coins, I need to say that, but um, this game is just amazing. It's got some of the best storage components I've ever seen in the game it's got this little tray that like reveals underneath and then all of these wooden pieces stay in there perfectly they do this amazing thing where they tell you how to put all the stuff back in the box could please everyone do that and not just that but the artwork is really really cool it feels like old school oil paintings it's just great uh, and then the gameplay is very unique Stan Kordonsky I got to talk to him about this game years ago when they were developing it and he was telling me about this game that they were going to be making with this auction stuff and I couldn't understand what he was really saying but I was like that's cool and then I backed the game got it in and played it and I absolutely love it there's a flip that happens where at the beginning you're auctioning off what you want to do but then and so the highest thing gets the best stuff but then when it comes time to do the things the lowest things get to do them first and so uh, what's cool about that and really quickly is that I paid for all this cool stuff that I get to do, but when it comes time to do it, am I going to be able to do the thing that I was planning on doing because somebody could have uh, done something on the board to change that. So it keeps you on your toes, keeps you anxious on what you wanna do. And then there are all these goals that are happening throughout the game that you're trying to do, whether that's secret or open. It's just a really cool game with special abilities and they nailed it on the production for this game. It's great. Okay, really quickly, two more. I don't know if you want me to stop or not because some people like long videos and then some people are like, would you, would you just hurry up and shut up? So I don't know where you are, but probably if you made it this far, then you are in it to win it and you're not worried about that. So um, Paladins of the West Kingdom. I, I'm just such a huge fan of this line of games. Shem uh, Phillips and then SJ McDonald, who came on with uh, Architects of the West Kingdom, and then they came back and designed this one together. And those two guys together have started to create this next level of complexity with games that are approachable. 
and uh, architects of the West Kingdom had it. Okay, so sorry, I'm not explaining myself well, but Raiders of the North Sea, favorite game, love this. Then Architects of the West Kingdom is like a step up. And then Paladins is the deep end of the pool. And it's only deep because there are just a number of choices that you have to make along the way. I am such a fan of uh, this style game of placing these workers out. They keep changing the game. In uh, Raiders, you did this thing where you placed a worker, pick up a worker. In Architects, they gave you all your workers and you could leave them out and get more and more every time you did the same action. Well, in this one, they took away the center board and everybody has their own worker placement board. And so uh, I really, really like that. They keep upping it uh, with the Paladin cards that you play at the beginning of each round. It makes for some tough decisions on what you do when you do it. I love the artwork. The components for this are killer, and uh, I just can't recommend it enough. Um, now, I did review this game, and he sent me a free copy of it, but uh, I would have paid money for this myself. It is, it's just a great game. Okay, now, uh, Reavers of Midgard. This is the follow-up to Champions of Midgard. It's by a completely different designer, J.B. Howe. And um, this was, there's some controversy if you want to go into it with Gray Fox Games. I don't want to get into it. But at the end of the day, all that I really care about is how does the game play. And it is like the perfect step towards Euro. If you like, um, if you liked Champions of Midgard, this is nothing like it. Uh, Champions of Midgard was about rolling your dice and going out onto the sea and doing all that kind of stuff. This is totally different. This is definitely more Euro feel to it. And the basic idea in the game is that everybody gets to lead on a turn and they get to choose a location on the board. They go to that location, they get the best benefit, but then everybody else follows behind them and they could do the thing too, if they're able to, uh, but they get a less benefit really easily it might be like I get to choose these two cards and I take two cards from the deck well then the next person they might only get to choose two cards and they get one card from the deck and then the third person they just get to choose two cards it's like that uh, or when you go to battle the first person obviously gets to choose the battle that they want to take and they get two victory points everybody else after them they just get to go to battle so it has that feel. It's really huge on set collection. There's a lot of set collection points that are happening in the game. And um, the reason that I recommend this game is because it's different than Champions of Midgard. And I like the follow action. Just that action is so much fun to me to be able to follow along and try to figure out when you want to do things. Because you can look around the board and say, okay, they don't have any food this round. I'm going to go battle. And then you could get like a 20 point lead or a 19 point lead if you get the really big card because they can't go to battle this round. And so you do it at the right time. Um, the only negatives to the game, I guess, are that, um, well, I haven't said any negatives about any other game, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, there, there's little things, you know, maybe, but, uh, I, I love this game. I think the, the quality of the production is really cool, uh, with the, the game trays that they gave with this little dice holder, the, the wooden bits that come with this, I think are great. I cannot recommend the artwork enough. Uh, Game Toppers uh, has a mat that's drawn by the same artist, and I can't wait to get that. I want to put this on this table because I love the artwork that's in this game. The style of it looks so very cool. So, all right, that's it. Uh, I'm sure that there are other games, but I just... Before I did this video, I just looked around the room and looked for some stuff that I could talk about uh, real quick because I think that that's, that's cool. My phone's going nuts. I'm sorry if you've heard the beep. So anyways, I'll leave it at that. If you have any questions about any of these games, any recommendations that you would make uh, for them or against them, I'd love to hear that too. So uh, thanks for watching the Board Game Closet. We'll see you next time.